guys hope you're doing great our today's question is how is robber it's an easy level question but a question on dynamic programming so i thought it would be good to have on, on the list so the question says you're a professional robber planning to rob houses along a street each house has certain amount of money stashed the only constraint shopping you from robbing each of them is adjacent houses have security system connected and it will automatically contact the police if two adjacent houses were broken on, into on the same night. Given a list of non-negative integers representing the amount of money of each house, determine the maximum amount of money you can drop tonight without alerting the police. So basically the question tells us that you're given this kind of an input, right? And you can only rob houses which are not adjacent to each other. So here you could rob one and three, the house with one and three money and, and uh, rob total four units of money. Or you could start from two and then you'll have to go to one, right? So you cannot visit any adjacent elements. Similarly, if you see in the second example, yeah, sorry. So here one plus three is more than two plus one and that's why we go for one plus three sequence and four is the amount of money you can draw and in the second example it's so if you sum up 2 9 and 1 it gives you 12 and if you sum up 7 and 3 it gives you 10 and hence 12 it's the answer okay so this is an unsorted array let's have a look at the approaches that we can use to solve this question okay So please pause the video for a moment, have a look and come back. All right, so I think here we do have a clear answer, which is dynamic programming, because the reason is that we, first of all, there is no condition that this question satisfies in whatever we have stated on the slide. Other thing is that if you think of a solution by going for you know each element like twice so that would be not a o of n complexity and you might be able to try and solve it with that and you'll be able to do it but there is a very high chance that the interviewer would ask you to improve the time complexity and that is where dynamic programming will come in handy so um as mentioned in some of my previous videos on dynamic programming. Uh, dynamic programming is used when we have the same sub problem to be solved over and over again. And we want to reuse the output of a sub problem in the next sub problems that we're solving, right? So here is a similar case. And what we would be doing here is that, so for the first and second elements, it would be quite clear so for first, it would be just the first. For second, it would be maximum of the two, right? If you would only have this size of an array, that is one comma two, then for, for, for just one, you can just drop one unit of money and at two, you can drop two units of money. And after that, what we'll do is that for every index, we'll check that is the previous, uh, the amount of money that could have been dropped at the previous index is that more or the current plus the minus two index will be more, right? So for three, for example, you need to see is two more or three plus one more. So obviously three plus one is more. So you'll populate that DP array with four. At one, you have to see is four more or one plus two more all right so that's how we are just going to solve it it's going to be a very quick solution and let's get started so always make sure that you are taking care of base cases so in this case if if let's say the length of the array and when you know that you'll be using this more than once it's always better to just declare a variable. So if n is equals to zero, right, then we return 
zero there's no there are no houses so there are no there's no money if n equals to 1 that is there's just one house right so we have to return n uh, so we have to return whatever money that house has right we we'll just rob that house so nums of zero okay fine now after that we will create our tp array okay uh, now we need to think about the size of it right so since we for each house we just want to find the values from the elements at the back of that particular array right could it be it could be in the dp or in nums itself so we don't need to basically um, take any extra number of elements here right so you always in dynamic programming think about what you would need to calculate and do you need to go beyond like for the last element do you need to go beyond the size of the area and have another element to store some result outside that right so if that's not required then you probably just need the same size of the array so we'll just take that okay and now let's start traversing the array so we um or before that we have to uh, so as i was saying dp of zero would always be equal to nums of zero because you can just drop that house dp of one would be equal to the max of right the max of dp of zero or dp of one right and then if we start so we'll just start from i equals two right i less than n i plus plus okay so okay so now um for two as i said what we'll do is dp of i equals to math dot max again we are taking the max max of the previous one so if we understand that okay the <clears throat> the other adjacent flow right the other adjacent stream of houses is rendering more money so if the previous dp is more that is the adjacent stream is giving more money right so what i would do is that I would say i minus 1 that gives the previous one or if I go by the current stream so I would add the current element right to it because yeah it's a part of that stream plus dp of i minus 2 so which of the two streams is going more is rendering more money is what we want in each dp to be like cumulative kind of a result for, for our last element and the last element will have a summation of whatever stream was rendering more money right that's the idea behind it okay so all we have to return is dp of n minus 1 right okay all right let's run this code fine and let's sum in so as you saw the time complexity for the solution is o of n because we just um okay we have a wrong answer because oh, okay because it should not be dp it should be nums right we have to work on the actual value and not the dp array okay that makes perfect sense let's see if now it runs okay great so the time complexity of the solution is o of n because we're just traversing the array once right uh, and the space complexity is o of n as well because we're using the dp array so guys if i hope you find this helpful in understanding dynamic programming better and if you do please like share and subscribe and keep coding and take care guys